the Military Family Wellness Center provides really a critical service in the community to veterans and to their family members. We offer evidence-based treatment, which means treatment which is short-term, which is focused, and which we know works. We have no waiting list, our treatment is free, and we have extensive expertise serving veterans, serving their families, and in fact, many of our clinical staff are people with military experience themselves. These services are especially critical because many in the military family community lack access to services, either because they don't qualify or they're not able to get in in a timely fashion where they need to go, uh, or they don't have access to treatments that are proven to be effective. Uh, and this is especially true for family members who often don't qualify and, and, and often are not included when services are offered to veterans and their families. And we're really excited and privileged to offer these services to help veterans and their families get better quickly and get better effectively. Well, most treatments for post-traumatic stress disorder work based on exposure. That means you have to face the things you fear the most, reminders of the trauma you've been through. And a lot of patients don't want to do that. Interpersonal psychotherapy, which is an alternative approach we've developed, doesn't make you relive the past. It focuses not on the trauma, but on the interpersonal consequences of that trauma. We know that people who have PTSD tend to feel numb, and they tend to withdraw from other people. And no wonder, if you don't know how you feel, it's pretty hard to know whom you can trust. So. IPT works not by facing the trauma, but by helping patients to get beneath the numbness and to recognize that feeling anxious or sad or angry, particularly angry, in certain circumstances is normal and a useful social signal. And patients can then use those feelings to interact with other people and decide whom they can trust and whom they can't. In civilians, we found it works just as well as the best tested exposure therapy, and it worked even better for patients who were depressed, as well as having PTSD, or who had had a sexual trauma. Here at the Military Family Wellness Center, we're continuing to use IPT to treat veterans with PTSD, and we're still getting good results. And this is about the only place uh, where you can find IPT for post-traumatic stress disorder. No treatment works for everybody, and there are, there are need for more alternatives. And so what we're doing is equi a project looking at equine therapy. Now equine therapy, or more properly, equine assisted therapy, or EAT, is often being touted as a great therapy for people with PTSD. However, and there are lots of programs that offer it, and many of them are aimed at veterans. If you go on the website, you see all these programs. Um, so, but basically, a lot of that these claims are made on anecdotal evidence. There's very little research in the field of equine therapy generally, and even less on equine therapy for PTSD of veterans, although there are a lot of claims being made. So what we're doing is a study to actually look at equine therapy in veterans. And the first thing we have to do is say, well, what is it? Like, what is equine therapy for veterans? And what are people doing? And what we found was there's not a standard way of doing it. There is no sort of manual on how to do it. So our first step was actually to define what we were testing and what we meant by equine therapy. So we had to come up with a standard treatment that we could actually test. And so we work with people who were experts in PTSD, people who are experts in treatment trials, people who have written manuals, and we also work with people who are actually doing equine therapy. Um, and we sketched out what we thought made sense. And then we sort of, tr we tried it out. We had two pilot groups of four veterans each. We went through what we thought the treatment would look like, and in fact, we, um, a lot of it worked really well. There were some things that we changed based on the feedback and our experience with the groups. Then we took the new manual and we fleshed the whole thing out, like every session. And right now what we're doing is we're testing this manual in an open trial of veterans. So 
we're in the middle of the open trial and the trial's ongoing. You learn some basic skills, but it's not, it's not about horsemanship. It's about when you're doing something, how, how are you feeling, how's the horse reacting? Are you communicating clearly? Um, it, does the horse look confused? Um, like last night when I was observing a session, they were trying to get the horse on the tarp and the horse was just looking at them like, well, you know, what do you want me to do? And they realized that they were standing on either side and that they were confusing the horse. So you have to sort of be deliberate and sort of know what your purpose is and communicate it to the horse that you know what you're doing and so they can sort of know what you're doing because you know they're in a herd they're, they're looking for a leader and looking for direction and it's making it's teaching people how to be clear and how to clearly communicate and often they'll say things like oh i realized like i wasn't really sure what i was doing and i could see that chuck was picking that up like he didn't know what to do and like once i'd sort of decide i'd do it this way then he seemed to to get what i was doing so and they'll bring up things like they'll realize that when they're unsure, they often act unsure and they're not communicating clearly, but if they're being deliberate. And that even happens if you're leading a horse. Like if you're leading a horse, you keep turning around, is it coming? It doesn't know what you're doing because you're not being deliberate. So then when you're leading, then it will follow you, stuff like that. So it's a lot in being clear or they'll recognize that they can't do something like lift the horse's foot up or something and they're feeling anxious that you know, so you talk about well, how are you feeling, how did it make you feel, what was Chuck doing. So there's a lot of talking. It's very in the moment, like here and now, and, and learn, teaching people like how they're coming across. And you'll pick up, they'll pick up things that they hadn't noticed in themselves that they were doing. And they'll bring us stuff, yeah, I know, like this happens. You know, they'll bring up other times where the same kind of thing happened. And, and they'll think, you know, and they learn how to communicate better. Well, there is a lot of progress in using neuroimaging uh, in order to better understand the problem and, and then to develop better, more effective, more rapid treatments for, 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 for PTSD. Um, we started uh, to use neuroimaging about seven years ago with uh, funding from the National Institute of Mental Health um, uh, that enable us to um, look at the brain of um, patients with PTSD, many of them were veterans, before treatment, uh, provide evidence-based treatment, and then look at the brain again after treatment. Um, this, kind of, um, uh, this kind of methodology is, is, was pretty unique at the time, now less so, um, enabling to uh, provide kind of a better uh, look, uh, a deepest look and more meaningful meaningful and objective look into the brain of, uh, of human beings and, and to understand what's, uh, what's wrong there, really, uh, and, and what is really the cause of the suffering, the pain, the anxiety, the depression, then provide treatments and, and see whether the brain um, on its very complicated structure and function has been uh, changed over time. Uh, we learned a lot from uh, those experiments uh, we were able to identify um, these functional processes in both the reward systems and the fear systems of the brain. And to set up uh, uh, better and more stronger to the next challenge, which is really to develop treatments that directly target those uh, brain systems.